this is Cynthia Lydic smith I'm delighted that you're joining us here today. I'm an author of books for young readers, from picture book readers, through middle grade, through young adult, and I'm coming to you from Austin, Texas. My most recent book is Hearts Unbroken. It's the story of two teen journalists who are covering the controversy around the diverse and inclusive casting of their high school musical, The Wizard of Oz. So what's happened is we have a new theater teacher at the high school and she's decided to shake things up. She's well aware that the same sorts of kids tend to get the same roles year after year. And she wants to be more open-minded about who could fulfill a certain part. Not everyone is happy about that and that's what causes the controversy that our main character Louise and her friend Joey cover. It's also a love story about those same two characters. She's a reporter for her school newspaper and he's a photojournalist and videographer. She's also a member of my tribal nation, the Muscogee Creek Nation, and he's an Arab American boy. And they're just trying to figure out themselves, each other, and their relationship in a world that doesn't make sense to most of us much of the time. Hearts Unbroken was loosely inspired by my own high school experiences. I had a similar romantic relationship and I was also a teen journalist. I was editor of my high school newspaper in suburban Kansas. Louise is newer to journalism, but she's just as excited about the power of story, true stories in her case, even though she's a character in a fictional one. This book is in conversation with other books in the field of children's and young adult literature. It touches on L. Frank Baum and his personal history as a journalist prior to his writing The Wizard of Oz. It also reaches out in a more affirming way to books by other Native writers, most significantly the novel If I Ever Get Out of Here by Eric Gansworth. In Hearts Unbroken, the high school librarian makes sure that Louise receives a copy of Eric's book to pass on to her little brother Huey. There are a lot of high school and public librarians out there who are making sure that kids like you get their hands on the books of their hearts. I'm someone who writes for all ages of young readers, not only teenagers, but middle schoolers and younger kids too. This is my first book, Jingle Dancer, and it's a children's picture book for ages four to seven. I like writing for different ages of young readers because the heroes that occur to me come in all ages and from a myriad of points of view. In fact, it's the young hero who generally helps me to decide what form the story belongs in. I'm going to read just a couple of pages of Jingle Dancer. So here's a brief peek into Jingle Dancer by Cynthia Lydic Smith, illustrated by Cornelius Van Wright and Ying Wahoo. Tink, tink. Tink, tink, saying cone-shaped jingles sewn to Grandma Wolf's dress. Every Grandma bounce step brought clattering tinks as light blurred silver against jingles of tin. Jenna daydreamed at the kitchen table, tasting honey on fry bread, her heart beating to the brum, 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 brum of the powwow drum. As Moon kissed Sun goodnight, Jenna shifted her head on Grandma Wolf's shoulder. I want to jingle dance too. Next powwow, you can dance girls, Grandma Wolf answered, but we don't have enough time to mail order tins for rolling jingles. So that's the first pages of Jingle Dancer. And here we have young Jenna with her grandmother. We know quite a bit about her. We've met her, we've seen her in her home. We know what she wants to dance at powwow, and we know it's in her way that she needs jingles for her regalia to do so. I write children's books for kids from ages four to, well, let's just say the young at heart. I get mail from readers of all ages. And a lot of people ask me, how do I know whether the story is a picture book, a chapter book, or a novel? And the answer is usually about that character. What is the kind of thing that they want? How old are they? What is their worldview? And they might seem very different writing a picture book and a novel, but they're the same in that the character wants something, and there's usually a struggle to achieve it. There are a lot of transferable skills that you acquire as an author moving from one age range and format to another. For example, picture books teach me lyricism, an economy of language, whereas novels tend to be more layered in a way that I can bring, usually in cooperation with the illustrator, to the youngest readers as well.
People often ask me what my favorite book is. I've published 15, and this is my 20th anniversary as an author. Jingle Dancer was published 20 years ago in the year 2000. My answer is my favorite book is always the one that I'm working on now, and I'm really excited to tell you about that book. It's called Ancestor Approved Intertribal Stories for Kids, and it features art, poetry, and short stories by 15 native authors coming together to create a cooperative experience, a fully immersive fictional experience. We worked as a team to do world building and to craft stories which would involve characters who met each other along the course of a two-day intertribal powwow. Unfortunately, I don't have the cover art to show you yet, but I would like to show you The Hero Next Door. It's a book that's published in conjunction with We Need Diverse Books, and it celebrates everyday heroes. Kids like you who are doing their best through their daily lives to make the world better. My story, Girl's Best Friend, is about a young girl who volunteers to walk shelter dogs and eventually places one in a forever home with her cranky landlady. I like this book for many reasons, but most of all I like it because researching the story meant that I spent a lot of time on the website of my own local animal shelter to do research. And that is how I met Naki. This is Naki. She is a long-haired chihuahua, and she's what happens when story comes into your real life.